Hello friends, we are seeing what is the syllabus of the first unit. Now we will actually start first unit. Uh, before going to actual syllabus of digital signal processing, we should know what is the meaning of signal, what is the processing and what is the digital. When we will understand these terms, we will understand what is the digital signal processing means. So first of all, we should know what is the signal. First thing we are going to do is to understand what is the term signal means. Uh, signals are the functions of some independent variables. This is a standard definition you should find in any book. Now, what can be these variables? These variables can be temperature, distance, time and pressure. That means these are these variables are the physical quantities. What we do is that we write function against this physical quantity. For example, f of t is cos of t. In this, the f of t is a function. That function can be uh, derived from taking the cosine of t. This t is time which is an independent variable and we can we take the function of that. This is a function of this independent variable. These variables can be independent variables or derived variables. In signal sense systems, we have seen that these functions are time dependent. So everywhere the time term t came. In digital signal processing, this dependency on time is lost and it starts depending upon the number. So you will find that the functions are written like f of n is equal to cos of n. Now this is the theoretical background of what is the signal. Let's understand actually what signal means. This is the theoretical background of the signal. Now let's see what is the signal actually means. Uh, take an example of say I am traveling from place A to place D. So this is the distance. We represent the distance of I represent this quantity as distance between A and B. Now consider that there is a junction over here, here and here. These are not signals. We are not going to stop there. These are the junctions. So just we are going to pass through those. But while approaching the junction, we are going to reduce the speed of our vehicle. What information I will get from this is that we will get the information between information that what is the distance between A and B. Okay. So suppose this is C, this is D and this is E. So I will get the information that what is the distance between this A and this C. Uh, what is the distance between this A and this D. What is the distance between A and E. Again what is the distance between B and C distance between B and D, distance between B and E, again the distance between C and D and C and E and at the last the distance between D and E. If, we, if I want more information from that it is not possible directly to get from this. But if I differentiate the distance ds by dt, if I do this what will happen? We know that if we'll differentiate the displacement with respect to time, I get velocity. Right? So we know that velocity if I have a plot. So at the start the velocity will be zero and it will go on increasing. At this portion I will keep my speed constant. Okay? When I will approach to the junction, what will happen? The velocity will fall. But it will not fall to zero. Again, it will increase as junction is passed and it will remain constant. And at junction, when junction will be there, this will fall and again it will increase and again it will fall here at the E and again it is increased and at the B it will fall to zero. So I will stop. Right? And this is velocity. This velocities we got by differentiating the time. Can you get a 
information from this yes more information we can get if i differentiate this velocity with respect to time and this will be our acceleration so what my actual acceleration will be the, or here you can see that the speed is increasing so there will be acceleration part but what happened between this the speed is remaining constant so acceleration will be zero so it will go high and it will fall to zero to this point and here the speed is falling that means it is a negative acceleration again to this point it will fall to zero again constant so that it's zero and again it will increase it will go on like this oh sorry again it will fall this is wrong fall to zero it will remain constant it will fall to zero constant and it will increase it will fall to zero and this will continue at the last acceleration will be negative and it will fall to zero this is the acceleration okay. if i have to get more information from that that is what is the change in my acceleration i want to find will change in the acceleration that i will get by differentiating d a by with respect to time now here you can see that this velocity is a function of this s and t this a is a function of v and t here also change in the acceleration is the function of a and t these are the functions and this s t v a those are the variables on which this function is depending and this is known as sigma another example we can take that is the temperature in tunnel if i want to find out a temperature in tunnel so what i will do is that in a 24 hour i will find out in 24 hours what is the temperature right so what i'll do this is 6 am 8 am 12 hmm then this is 2 4 6 8 then 12 hmm 2 4 right and i will go in this uh, measuring the temperature this is for you So this is ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. I consider at six a.m. I have somewhere around say fifteen degree temperature. Right? At eight, I will have say something around sixteen degrees temperature. At ten o'clock, I will have twenty degree of temperature. At twelve, say twenty-three degree of temperature. At two twenty five degree of temperature, at four it rose to twenty eight. At six now it fall again to twenty five. At eight it fall back to say twenty eight. At ten it fall back to seventeen. At twelve say sixteen. At two say again sixteen. At four it fall back to say. 15 degree. I had recorded the temperature. Right? If I join this line, if I join this line, this will represent a function f of t. Okay. Okay. Instead of t, I will write temperature. This is f of t. and temperature is my signal and this is my function i can find out what is the change in the in temperature at every point so here in this area the change is very slow whereas in this area high positive temperature is increasing here it is decreasing and the change is high whereas in this area it is remaining 
little bit faster. That I can find out with my mathematics. So these are all the mathematical equations, the previous one which we saw about the traveling from one place to another place. That is also the example of doing the mathematical calculations. Now we'll take one more example. Now consider that you are standing in a field and you are playing with the ball. Right? What you need is that you throw this ball upwards. This ball will go like this and it will come back. Okay. Now if you have to plot the speed of this This is vertical speed, right? And the speed will be in the linear direction. And this is distance. Right? If I to do that, okay, suppose this is total 10 meter it went in the air. Okay, so what will happen is that as this ball is going up, the speed will go on decreasing and it will reach zero. Again, it will go on, speed will go on increasing. What will about what will happen with the distance traveled? Hmm? With this is vertical distance, keep in mind this is vertical distance. What will happen at start? It will cover maximum distance because its speed is high right what about it will happen it will start the distance travel will start on decreasing right and at this point after this point where yeah, the speed is zero okay it will not travel any further and when speed is going to increase it will fall back to Remember this graph, we are going to use this. So when we talk about the signal, this kind of waveform comes in our mind, which is sine wave. This sine wave is actually related with the periodicity. When we talk about signal, this kind of graph comes to our mind. And when this was introduced, we had actually studying the periodicity. This was in the school days. And this periodicity was introduced to us with help of pendulum. This pendulum action is like this. This go from here, it comes back over here and again go back over here and this will repeat. Uh, like this, the periodicity was introduced. Let's take the example of this pendulum. Right? What will happen? It will first we took this on this side. Okay? This is theta, and if we we'll release this, this will come back over here and will travel back over here. This is theta. And again, it will come back and it will go back. And this will repeat again and again. And this was introduced to us, to us as periodic city. Now, if I am to draw this, how I draw? Suppose this is x and this is y. Right? Now, suppose this is front view. This is top view and this is right hand side view. How will it draw? In the front view, I will see only this moment. On top view, I will see only this. And from side view, what I will see is that this much moment. So, this means this so this much moment this i will saw in the side view what information i will get from this maybe this angle theta the length of this arc 
so this is L1 length total distance travel horizontally L2 and this total height is L3 this L1, L2 and L3 I can get from this drawing when I plot this in x and y direction whether it will explain to me what is periodicity no it will not explain to me what is the periodicity and when I draw in the space that is x and y it is very difficult for us to define this in the, the meaning of periodicity so what we do is that we go to the another domain we change the domain from this space domain we travel to the time domain this space domain is known as spatial domain this time domain is known as temporal domain how it will work this is our pendulum it is this is theta and this is also theta it is going from here and again coming back to here and it is continue like this now in the temporal domain that is time domain what we do is that our x axis instead of x we write here okay and suppose this is distance from this main position okay. suppose I have to plot this what I will do is now we have taken the example of uh, previously the example of ball which we are throwing okay that ball goes over here and come back over here what is the speed here that is speed is high and here the speed is low or in fact it is zero and what about the distance travel here the distance travel is high and here it is low similarly if I have to draw this for this ball what will be there it will be something like this and it will be coming back to this mean position right again it is going away in this direction and again to the max point it is falling to zero and this is going to continue here you can see that I had drawn the moment in the time domain but it is not resembling to the oh, sine wave what went wrong is that we should mark this as positive direction and this is negative direction if I do this what will happen it is, it is like this this is positive direction it will travel from, from the positive direction it will come back to zero again in the negative direction again it will come back to zero and this will continue now what is happening this part is repeating again and again and again and this is periodicity So now, when we came from space domain to time domain, we were able to explain the periodicity. Get a information either we do mathematical operation. or we change domains right and we in this we saw space domain and time domain there is one more domain that is frequency domain we have studied Fourier transform and what Fourier actually talks about is about 
the signal having components of two different signals. This is the sine wave which we know but in real case we do not get this kind of pure sine wave. What we get is there something like this suppose. like this. It is not pure sine wave. We can treat this this disturbances as the noise. But that is also signal, right? So what is exactly there? There are two signals. Right. Now in the signal in the periodicity we have seen this is total time and if I have to find out the frequency it is 1 upon t frequency is 1 upon t and here we cannot find the frequency of each and every signal so what we need to go is we need to go to the frequency domain with help of Fourier we get two different components of frequency. So, to get an information, either we do the math equation or change the domain. So, from space, we go to the time or to the frequency. That is there, that will be there in our digital signal processing. I hope that you had understood why we need to study the different domains.